Hello again. In this video, we're going to run through the different ferret colours and patterns and how they arise. Let's start with the classic sable ferret. This is considered the default or original colour from which all other colours are derived. It's the colour of the wild species from which the ferret is believed to be domesticated, the European polecat and the steppe polecat. The main features of a sable are the darker legs, haunches and tail, as well as the classic bandit mask. Or Put another way, a sable is a ferret with a lighter main body than tail, legs and haunches. In this photo, we can see that the darker areas on a sable are the result of the colour existing on most, if not all, of the guard hair. Whereas for the main body, the dark colour only exists for the top part of the guard hairs. This effect is referred to as banding. If you part a ferret's hair, you will notice that the coat is made up of not just long guard hairs, but also a short undercoat. In this next photo, you can see the long guard hair alongside the shorter fuzzy undercoat. Next up in the colour tones, we have a dark sable. You can see that the sabling effect is much less apparent. This is due to a combination of a darker guard hair and a darker undercoat. Parting the hair here, we see that the undercoat takes on more of a grey apricot colour compared to that of a standard sable, where the undercoat could be anything from bright white to more of a cream. At the extreme, we have a ferret which displays an almost complete absence of sable or banding effect. The result being a coat which is all one colour. This is known as a solid ferret. Coming back down the colour scale, there is a gene which acts to suppress the coloration in the main body, leading to more of an extreme colour contrast between the legs and the main body. This is known as a point, or a Siamese. The ferrets that we've seen so far have exhibited varying degrees of the sabling pattern, and hence varying degrees to which the main body is lighter than the legs, tail and haunches. The sable pattern is entirely independent of coloration, so the sable can and does exist in all colour tones. Of course, it is more apparent in some versus others, and we'll see that later on in the video. Now let's move on to colour tone variations. There are a collection of genes which control the production of chocolate, black and red tones within ferret coats. Depending on a ferret's particular genotype, this will result in a black, a rich chocolate, or a cinnamon colour. The next category is defined by a gene which controls the extent of dilution of a colour tone. Where a typical sable will have a rich dark chocolate tone, the lighter chocolates, as shown here, are a result of a specific outcome in this dilution gene. Another dilution outcome produces the sandy coloration. A sandy is often referred to as a champagne, but the two terms are interchangeable. Recall earlier that we said that the sable patterning is independent of colour tone, well, we can see this at work here, as both the chocolate and sandy in the previous two pictures have sable patterns. The next step in the dilution scale is the dark-eyed white or black-eyed white. This is an extreme form of dilution with the almost complete absence of colour. However, dark-eyed white ferrets will, as the name goes, still have dark eyes. And this represents the fact that pigment is still exists in the eyes. A dark-eyed white that is the result of a dilution gene will be white from birth. This is different to a silver which becomes white over time. The final and extreme dilution outcome is the complete absence of pigment in the body, which produces the albino. Albinos are 100% white and even lack pigment in the eyes, hence always have pink eyes. Moving on from dilution, we come to the final colour tone, the silver category. A silver is created when some of the guard hairs are white rather than coloured. The more white hairs, the lighter the silver, so we can have anything from dark silvers to light silvers. This means the coat isn't really silver, it's just how the eye perceives the mixture of white and dark hairs. A common feature of the silver category is the Rhone effect. This means that at every molt, at spring and winter, the coat will contain more white hairs than it had before. Over time, most silvers will become whiter, often turning progressively into a dark-eyed white. That's pretty much it for the ways that colours are generated. 
Of course, a ferret can have a wide variety of genes combining the sable effect, the dilution effect, the red-black-brown effect or the roan effect to give a unique outcome. Let's now move on to coat patterns. Focusing on head patterns first, we have a small white stripe on the top of the head. It's called a blaze. When the white stripe on the head is so wide that it covers most of the head, it's referred to as a badger. Finally, the full white head is then a panda. A milk mouth is a ferret which looks like it's dipped its mouth in milk. The white will cover its muzzle and around its nose. Ferrets very often have white chins, so this doesn't really get its own name due to the commonality. Moving on to body patterns now. We have a bibbed ferret, which looks like it is wearing a white or cream bib around its neck under the chin. It can be anything from a slim dotty effect to a bib covering most of the neck. A mitt is a ferret which has white feet. This could be anything from a single white toe on one foot all the way to four full white ankle socks. Next on the list is the harlequin, which typically means white splodges on the knees and around the belly. Note that in continental Europe, they include mitts in the harlequin category rather than its own group. The final pattern category covered in this video is a bit of a miscellaneous. This includes a pinto, which has white splodges a bit more randomly around the body or on the tail. And a marked white, which is the opposite, whereby a ferret has a white coat with random colour splodges. Finally, let's talk noses. We've got full pink noses, full chocolate noses, full black brown noses. Then there is the T-shaped nose colour, where the nose is darker along the top and down the middle, like a T. Then you've got speckled noses and blotchy noses. Last but not least, there was one part of the ferret body, which is always the same colour. Can you guess? The foot pads, they're always pink. That's all we have for you today on ferret colours and patterns. We hope you found it interesting. Please click like and subscribe and check out our other videos.